Why haven't the right-wing conservatives started a civil war yet? I mean, how much further does this thing have to go? How much further do we have to see perverts grooming children, trying to turn them into perverts so that they have uh, new uh, perverted partners in the future? How much longer do we have to see abortion in this country? How much longer do we have to see anti-gun liberals uh, coming out with the dumbest arguments against guns and, and just threatening and saying, we're going to take all the guns. We're going to take them from you. How much longer? Why haven't right-wing conservatives started a civil war yet? Uh, I have the answer. That's why I'm making the video. Uh, very simple. Why hasn't it happened yet? One word. You ready? Debt. Um, <clears throat> back during the civil war years, uh, there were people down south that were slaves, as we well know. Um, they didn't like being oppressed. Some of them, there are stories of some that uh, they didn't mind it and they were actually treated quite well by their uh, masters and whatever else. Uh, again, slavery has been part of, of history, the history of man for thousands of years. You know, everybody at some point in time, every race out there has been enslaved by members of their own race, so to say. It's slavery, some great evil of the 19th century. Well, you're ignorant of history. There have been white people that were slaves. There have been blacks that were slaves. There have been Hispanics, you know, Orientals, whatever. Uh, one tribe conquers another tribe. They take the people as slaves. That's what it is. It's not some kind of a ultra evil or something like this. But um, the slaves down south. I'm tired of being... Uh, bought and sold and whatever else like a like an animal okay then go to war against your masters oh can't you know why because you're in debt the Bible says that the borrower is servant to the lender um, <clears throat> what's the problem with most people right now most conservative uh, right-wing type of men in this world they're in debt um, hey I want you to come out here and I want you to Get armed and prepared. We're going to march on this city and we're going to shut down the pervert organizations and whatever else. We're going to bring them, make America great again and all this stuff. Oh, I can't. I can't get off work right now. And um, why don't you quit your job? Go into the war effort. Oh, because I have uh, bills to pay. That's what's going on. Um, again, understand when I speak against debt, I'm not just, you know, judging people and how dare you, you wicked sinners and things. I was in debt for a little while, back many years ago. I've been living debt free for a very long time, but I was not always debt free. See, you know, lost people always make the same mistake about Christians. They see a Christian like me and they say, oh, he's so judgmental. He's so this and he's so that. So narrow minded, so bigoted. But you seem to forget the fact that I was never. There's no cult out there that just uh, the people know the truth and they're raised in the truth and they never fall or whatever else. The Lord came into the world to save sinners. Okay, I was a sinner in my past. Um, yeah, I still struggle with certain sins and things. I'm not sinless. But my whole point is, oh, there's a deep spot. <laughs> certain areas of the snow is pretty deep yet. Here, most of it's melted, just a little bit, but Back to the whole point here. Um, I think I'm gonna turn and go the other way. <laughs> this is a little bit deep back in here. Don't have snowshoes on. But um, my whole point is, uh, I can condemn certain sins. And when the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged, it says, it goes on to say about removing the beam out of your eye so that you can clearly see clearly, clearly to remove the moat out of your brother's eye. So I can look at you and I can say, yeah, I had some debts in the past. I pay those debts off. Now I can see clearly where I can help you to get the moat out of your eye. I can see clearly and say, I can speak of my uh, mistakes in the past and I want to be able to help you with yours. I want to be able to help you get out of debt. And there are ways that you can do that. You have to live very frugally. You have to live in a very wise way. And when you become debt free, all of a sudden what happens is now you have freedom to be able to do things. And so some uh, tyrannical system comes in and they say you have to do this or you have to do that in order to go, go and buy and sell. 
no, I don't need to do that. I'm not going to do that. I have enough food stored up at home. I don't need to come to your stupid store. I can buy things online. I can do whatever. Um, I don't need to do that. Uh, I need to um, arm up, so to speak. I need to get some um, ways to protect my wife and my son and myself. I can do that. I don't have to worry about debts and paying bills and things like that. Again, part of the whole thing of me being a preacher, I have to experiment on myself. I have to get myself straightened out so that I can tell my viewers out there, here's what you can do to help your situation. Uh, if I truly love you, that's what I'm going to do. If I don't love you, then I'm just going to preach nice, happy things and not offend anybody and whatever else. Um, uh, that's why the Bible warns about by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Um, <clears throat> there are ways that you can make lots of money as a preacher. Uh, look at Joel Osteen. He's not a preacher. He's just a con artist salesman. But the whole point is he uses the appearance of being a preacher of righteousness in order to get money, to extort money from people. And he extorts a lot of money pe from people, and he does very well for himself, financially speaking. Whoa. I go down into the snow again. Um, it's early morning right now, so I'm able to, you know, the surface is frozen, but as it warms up today again, it's going to be sinking down in pretty far. But the Civil War, the reason that people are, a lot of men are just not able to stand up right now is because of debt. <laughs> They're sinking down in debt. Uh, kind of like I'm in the snow there. Um, and it cripples you. Debt is something that will cripple you. And uh, there aren't many preachers that will speak against debt because they themselves are in all kinds of debt and their church building's indebted and all the other stuff. And I don't want to be that way. And it's a lot harder to live debt-free. You have to learn to tell yourself, no, um, well, I need this and I need that. No. Is, is there money there? No. Then you can't buy it. You can't afford it. You have to wait. You have to save up. You, know, you might have to eat some uh, potatoes and onions for a while if you have potatoes in your area like we do here. Uh, we pretty much lived on uh, fried onions and potatoes uh, when we first moved to Maine. Didn't have a whole lot of money, so I was able to buy potatoes cheap locally. You know, you can eat canned beans, you can eat a lot of stuff uh, and save yourself a lot of money. Stop going out to eat um, and you just pay down one debt at a time. You get rid of your credit cards first, then you start to pay off your vehicles, you start to pay down your mortgage, and pretty soon you're debt free. And you can be like me. Right now, it's 7.30 or something, I think, in the morning. Something like that. And I'm out here walking around. I don't have to worry about, oh, I have to get into the office quickly because my boss, I have to be there. I start at 7 and work till, you know, whatever, 3 or 4 o'clock or something. I can get there whenever I, whenever I want to. I mean, technically, I'm working right now doing the video. But um, that's the reason why there is no real active resistance because everybody's so badly in debt. So I'm gonna be posting some videos at the end here to help you to realize what debt is. The whole thing of mortgage-backed securities, the fact that you become a security, you are traded on the stock market, um, you are a product, you are a slave, and slaves can't rise up against their masters. Um, and again, you know, right now, just to put this in there, uh, my son, we're teaching him history, of course, I'm. I do a lot of the history teaching for my son as he's homeschooled and we're going through the Civil War right now. And I'm seeing a lot of this stuff about how men will just leave everything. Leave their wife and their children at home, they go out on the battlefield and they would die. Well, who provides for their wife and their children? Well, it's a rough life, but the wife and the children, they have to provide for themselves. And the wives, a lot of times, they would have to remarry or do whatever else, but they were okay for a while. Why? Because there wasn't a lot of debt back in the 19th century. A lot of the debt came after the Federal Reserve was created here in 1913 in America. And the whole creature from Jekyll Island and fractional reserve banking and the whole abomination that we have now. And it's all based on debt. Debt equals slavery. So again, oh, the Civil War, it ended slavery. No, actually, it started slavery. Uh, there was the slavery of the black people down south, but the Civil War brought in slavery of all people. Hmm, interesting. So, 
you'd like to know more information about it, like I said, I'll have a sermon at the end of the video here. But um, that's why the problem, that's the problem, I guess the root of the problem here. And uh, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, uh, the debt, <laughs> being enslaved by money is also a very big problem. That's the root of all, uh, you know, going along with evil or whatever you'd want to say there. So just wanted to put that little video out real quickly. And until Americans start to figure this thing out and get out of debt, um, they're going to be remaining, remaining as slaves. You are the borrower is servant to the lender. Uh, again, another reason why I do these videos is to help you understand the relevance of the King James Bible to everyday life. Whether you're saved or lost, the King James Bible is relevant. It explains things as they truly are, breaks it down, makes it easy to understand. So that's going to be it. See you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.